In this video, I'm going to be explaining the sine ratio and how we can use it to find unknown side lengths in a right triangle or unknown angle measures in a right triangle. Here's an acronym that may help you remember your three trig formulas. Sokatoa, if you say it fast, it sounds like you're dipping your toe into a puddle. Sokatoa. So say that a bunch of times over, write it down a bunch of times so that you can remember it because this will be an acronym that helps you remember your three trig formulas. In this video, we're gonna focus on the so part. So the equation for the sine ratio is the sine of an angle. So that's the S part. And it equals O over H, or the opposite side length over the hypotenuse side length. So whenever we set up a trig equation, it's always relative to the angle that we are talking about. So over in this example triangle, if I'm talking about angle A, then the side lengths relative to that angle would be the opposite side over here, the side across. And then the side length that touches the angle or is next to it is the adjacent side. And then the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So in a previous video, we talked about the tangent ratio, which just uses the opposite and adjacent side. In this video, we're using the sine ratio, which involves the opposite and the hypotenuse side. So we can ignore the adjacent side in the following examples. So first, let's just make sure that we can set up opposite and hypotenuse sides relative to an angle. It's called the sine ratio. If I wanna find the sine ratio of angle A, then across from that is the length 24. That's the opposite length. And the hypotenuse length is 25. So the sine ratio would be 24 over 25, or in its decimal form, it would be approximately 0.96. Those side lengths change if we're talking about a different angle. So if we're talking about lengths that are relative to angle C, we want to find the sine ratio for angle C. The opposite side length would now be 7, but the hypotenuse isn't going to change. It's going to stay at 25. So the sine ratio for angle C is 7 over 25, or its decimal form would be about 0.28. So on your calculator, if we knew the angle measurement for angle A, and we asked our calculator what the sine of that angle was, it would give us this decimal. Or likewise, if we knew the angle measurement for angle C and we asked our calculator what the sine of that angle measurement was, it would give us this decimal form or the decimal form of the ratio. So that's the sine ratio opposite over hypotenuse. Let's see how we can use it to find an unknown side length. So using this example, let's solve for side B. Right now, if I want to use the sine ratio, and I'm using the angle 22 degrees here, across from that is side length B, and across from the right angle is our hypotenuse of 30. So solving for side length B right now would be the best case scenario to use the sine ratio because it involves the opposite and the hypotenuse sides. We're going to ignore this adjacent side for just a minute. So if I use sine of 22 degrees and set it equal to the opposite side length over the hypotenuse, it would be B over 30. I don't know, that's a little typo right there. Over here it says B over 30. We can set it up as a proportion and cross multiply to solve. You can cross multiply first and have the sine of 22 degrees times 30 equals B. Or you can convert the sine of 22 degrees to its decimal form and then you would have 0.375 times 30 equals B. Either way you want to do it is fine. Once we solve that or multiply those two numbers together, our side length B is about 11.258, and we could round it to the 10th spot, round up to about 11.3. And we can check our answer. We know that the sine of 22 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse side. So if we substitute what we found to be B, into this ratio, it should give us the same decimal as 0.375, or the sine of 22 degrees. So we check it. If you use a decimal form involving three decimal places rather than the rounded form, it'll be a little bit more accurate. So let's plug in 11.258 divided by 30, and our calculator does in fact tell us that it's the decimal equivalent of the sine of 22 degrees. 
distance. Now that we know that that side length is 11.3, we can actually use that and use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for A, or we could think about complementary angles. Because in this triangle, it's a right triangle, it's got 90 degrees right here, the other two angles must be complements. So 22 plus what should equal 90? So 90 minus 22 gives you this angle measurement, and we could call that angle A. So in doing that, we find that angle A is 68 degrees, or this angle right here is 68 degrees. And now we can use that angle and the sine ratio to solve for side A. So now that we have this angle measurement, the opposite side is A, the hypotenuse is still 30. So we can say the sine of 68 degrees is equal to A over 30. Solve this proportion by cross multiplying. The decimal value of the sine of 68 degrees is 0.927. And if we cross multiply that with 30, we get our value for A. So we get about 27.815, and we could round that and keep it at 27.8. We could also check our work. Now that we have three side lengths, we could use Pythagorean theorem. Square A and B, add them together and make sure it equals 30 squared. All kinds of ways to check our answers when we use Pythagorean theorem and trigonometry. All right, one more thing. How can we use the sine ratio to solve for an unknown angle measurement? Well, we can use inverse trig operations and just use the same ratio. So sine is always talking about the ratio comparing opposite to hypotenuse. So if we do the inverse sine of that ratio, it should give us the angle measure. So let's use this example to solve for angle X and angle Y. Let's start off with angle X. The opposite side or across from that angle would be the length 5. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Its length is 13. So if I do the inverse sine of 5 over 13, I get the angle measurement for angle X. And our calculator can tell us that as long as we're in degree mode, it gives us the degrees 22.6-ish degrees. So at this point, we could actually use the definition of complementary angles, if I know angle X is 22.6, angle Y must be 90 minus 22.6. But we can also use the sine ratio, the inverse sine ratio, to find the angle measurement as well. So if I want to solve for angle Y, I would use the inverse sine of 12 over 13. 12 being the opposite length, 13 is still our hypotenuse. So the inverse sine of 12 over 13 gives us about 67.38, which we could round up to 67.4. And then we can verify. These are indeed complementary pairs. They're going to add up to 90. And we can be sure that our answers are correct. We can also do one other check. I can make sure that the sine of 22.6, that decimal that our calculator gives us, is equal to this ratio. And it is, in fact. And we could also do the same check over here. Make sure that the sine of 67.4 degrees is about, or as close as we can get, to the decimal value of the ratio 12 over 13. And if you want to do some additional practice, we can just go through these examples pretty quickly here. To solve for x using sine, I would say the sine of 64 is x over 14. Cross, multiply, and solve, and we get about 12.6. In this example, I could say the sine of 35 degrees is equal to 6 over x. Cross multiply. That gives us one additional step where we got to divide 6 by the sine of 35 degrees, and we get about 10.5. We could use the inverse sine ratio to solve for unknown angles. So if I say the inverse sine of 22 over 40, then I can get my angle measurement for x, and we get about 33.4. Over in this example, I could do the same thing. Inverse sine, this time use 8 over 12, and we get about 41.8. Just in these last two examples, just make sure you can use the sine ratio to find an unknown side or an unknown angle. Say sine of 42 is x over 14, cross multiply and solve, and we get about 9.4. And over here, to solve for the angle, we're going to use the inverse sine and say 28 over 62 and get about 26.8.